Brenda Devine isn't the only person giving us a breakdown of the uh, behind the scenes of the, the Twitter files. Um, th- one of the dumbest people uh, that can, I mean, when it comes to parsing out um, an idea or connections between different circumstances or, you know, uh, the political, economic, and philosophical ramifications of the Illuminati and the swamp and the deep state all working together and the, you know, collaborating together with the FEMA camp at G20 shit. Like, uh, Alex Jones is obviously the craziest person. But the dumbest person to go for this kind of thing is, of course, uh, Glyn Blake. Glenn Blob. Glyn Blob. Blinding Blob. Okay, by the way, I don't know. He's in... He's obviously traveling and he's borrowing a radio station from some other place. And whoever it is, he's not okay with. So they pulled the shades on the window so that, I guess, people coming to and from work don't go, the fuck is Glenn Beck doing in my studio? Um, Yeah, no, Jimmy Doors, we'll get to Jimmy in a second. Jimmy has a take on China. We'll get to him in a second. Because it's at least he's going into an area he knows a lot about. So, but anyways... You think they own stock in the tinfoil industry? I think they do, chat room. But uh, this is, uh, Glenn Beck has a video. One reason Elon Musk's Twitter files are disturbing. Just like uh, Darth Vader finds your lack of faith. Um, let's, what is it? What's disturbing? The one thing, one reason. I don't want to hear a bunch of reasons. I want to hear the one. Break it down. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Dummy time. <laughs> Dumb time. Break it down. Sorry. Now I'm just going to, now that's stuck in my fucking head all day. Let's talk a little bit about Twitter. Did you go over uh, the um, expose that uh, was done this weekend on Twitter? Did you go over? Yes, yeah, Stu looks a little dubious. I'm, I'm going to guess he didn't see the whole thing. He saw select pieces of it, but he's, but. But don't worry, Glenn looked at the whole thing, and he's got his cover. Matt, from Matt Taibbi, the uh, yeah. the journalist. No, the other ones. <laughs> the other Twitter files uh, breakdown expose that happened. Yeah, Elon Musk basically seemed to give him a cachet of some sort of... Or... <laughs> or... Sorry, what was that word again? Journalist, yeah, mm-hmm. Elon Musk basically seemed to give him a cachet of some sort of no a a cache, c a c h e, um, is a, a cache of documents is what you would give him. Cachet is what you get when you're very highfalutin and you have a certain uh, je ne sais quoi, a certain I don't know what that uh, a la- makes everyone you know when um, when you say uh, b d e, people listen. A certain cachet, uh, yeah. Can't touch this. Break it down, boy. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. All right. Shit. This is going to be so dumb. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Never mind. I take it back. This would be brilliant. <laughs> he gave him a big bag of cashews. That's right. <laughs> he, gave, he sashayed his way in and gave him a cache of cashews <laughs> that showed the behind the scenes. <laughs> But look, uh, understand, I can't not. Look at Glenn's f- fucking, consider this face that he does all the time. Let me get, let me tell you a little something that I just found out that I'm going to pretend I knew for a very long while. A, a bunch of emails about whatever the Democrats were doing around the Hunter Biden laptop uh, era. Yes, the era. Yes, it was a good long dick. Remember the Hunter Biden laptop era? It was a, what a decade. I can't wait to do I Love the Hunter Biden Laptop on VH1. Uh, right before the 2000s. It's a little too soon, I think, right now. But we got to get some distance from it. And, uh, tw- Are we going to speed this up? Yeah, oh, fuck, man. Maybe. We might have to. It's 12 minutes. I might, at a certain point, we'll see what Glenn's argument is. Went the election. <laughs> and he was and, going to go through it and kind of see what was there. It's interesting that he didn't, you know, Musk wasn't trying to do it himself. He was giving it to who he res- saw as a responsible journalist to go through oh it. Oh boy, okay, okay. That's the second time you've said that word and 
I just can't, uh, you know, you said re- a journalist and then respected journalist. Mm-hmm. The guy is a blogger. I know because I've read it in the <laughs> New York Times. I've read it in. Oh, Matt Taibbi. He's talking about Matt Taibbi. And they're going to make a joke of the fact that other people consider my, Matt Taibbi a, jo- Taibbi a joke. Um, by the way, Matt Taibbi, um, his first professional journalism job was in what country chat room? Anybody? Hold on one second. Let's see if the chat room knows. Where did where did Matt Taibbi start his first big project? Anybody? Any on his own? Before he went to work for Rolling Stones? Yes, right. Trumpet of death getting right out of the gate. Ladies and gentlemen, it will be cascading across our screen in just a moment. That is right. Russia. That's the proper answer. Ladies and gentlemen, what do we have for it? Bob? We have the chance to subscribe, give a thumbs up and support the show. It's a great thing. Russia. That's right. Uh, not on RT. He had a like a douchebag e-zine that and they would he and his buddy would joke about sexually harassing the female staff there because they were Russian and they had to put up with it. Yeah, he he, he used to write big long scribes in his he wrote in his uh, in his autobiography. And by the way, if you you're under fifty years old and you've written an autobiography uh, and and that's an under seventy and you haven't survive cancer or something um you're a douchebag so uh anyways yeah um in politico i've oh and by the way my headphones are dying so if they shit out in a second i will i'm gonna swap i'm gonna i'll take a second and swap them out i don't know why they didn't charge from the morning show they're being weird oh hold on play did i say it just when it happened Wow, look how the video doesn't want to play all of a sudden. What's going on there? Back the fuck up. Huh. I'm being attacked. It's a DDoS attack. I'm under attack. What am I going to do? Oh, shit. This one, like, it won't play all of a sudden. Play, stupid. It's winding up. Give it a second. Sometimes it's just internet shit. Sometimes. Bluetooth cross chat, you think so? Oh, I said Russia three times and they attacked. That's what it did. Hold on one second. Give me one second. I'm going to reload that page and see if that does anything to it. Let's talk a little bit about Hold Twitter. On. Did you go? Wait, they, they should know because he worked for them, didn't he? I guess NBC. Co. I've as I've read it in respected journalist. Mm-hmm. The guy is a blogger. I know because I've read it in the <laughs> New York Times. I've read it in Politico. I've I've read it and heard it from NBC, MSNBC, CNN, uh, ABC News. He everywhere that Glenn used to work. He's a blogger. I, I heard it from the Rolling Stone. Wait, they, and they should know because he worked for them, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, well, he was uh, he was a contributing editor to the Rolling Stone and took down some major uh, some major uh, uh, things. But he took down some major things. OK, hold, hold on one second. Um, <clears throat> guys know I'm from Chicago, right? Uh, 20 years ago in Moscow, Matt Taibbi was a misogynist asshole and possibly worse. There he is. I don't know where you get that idea. This is in 2017. This is well back before, uh, Rolling Stone gave him a fucking chat show. Uh, Matt Taibbi has a new book out now called I Can't Breathe, all about the forces that conspired to kill Eric Garner. It's an important story that's become part of the national conversation as evidenced by Ryan Smith's interview with Taibbi in this week's Reader. But it's also inadvertently become part of another conversation that has risen to crescendo in the last few weeks. The Weinstein conversation. This, of course, encompasses not just Harvey Weinstein. He's talking about Me Too when it's popping off. In 2000, Taibbi and Mark Ames published The Exile, Sex, Drugs, and Libel in the New Russia, a memoir of their first year of editing The Exile, an alt-weekly in Moscow that took on the corrupt culture of post-communist Russia, mercilessly, mercilessly attacked expats who moved there to get rich quick, and gleefully exposed the shoddy reporting in the mainstream media. As Martha Bain wrote then in the reader uh, uh, headline, The Beast in the East. Uh, much of their work is funny. The paper plays because they wanted to be Hunter S. Thompson. Uh, fellow expats alike, some pranks are sharper and meaner than others, but they're all conceived under a towering belief in the righteousness of the paper's mission. The exile has kept up a holy racket railing away against stupidity, corruption, influence. 
Uh, but Ames and TV additionally write about how they also mercilessly sexually harassed and occasionally assaulted the women they encountered, both their colleagues in the exile office and Russian women, some as young as 15 they met socially. Many of these passages have previously been quoted in internet forums such as Reddit, but they took on new life this morning on Twitter. Bain summarized them in her interview. Most notably, the exile nurtures a peculiarly vicious, peculiarly, that's, if you have a big tongue, that's a difficult word, vicious and schizoid attitude towards women. While Russian women are rhapsodically celebrated as long-legged gazelles who's loose, with loose morals, the most physically attractive women on earth and usually available to the highest bidder, that's a quote from their book, Expat women are ridiculed at length as fat-ankled and defensively sexless. Self-hating, geeky American men are encouraged to take advantage of the perception that all Americans are rich and have oodles of condomless sex, sometimes in the uh, the backside, with drunk, nubile uh, divyushkas. divyushkas. Ex-girlfriends are held to public ridicule. Ames at one point chronicles his threats to kill a pregnant ex if she wouldn't have an abortion. More from Mark. Uh, wearing down your opponent is a formula for success in Russia. Take Peter the Great against Charles uh, XII or uh, um, Rudazov against Napoleon or uh, Zhukov against the Wehrmacht. They simply wear down their opponents. At 5.30 the next morning, Katya, acting the martyr, quietly slipped out of my apartment, made a beeline to the abortion clinic and sucked the little fucker out. So, um, yeah, this is, uh, that's, uh, that's, Matt Taibbi's business partner. Um, you know, I'm not PC, but there's a limit. You go too far. You always got to try to force Martians fed under the table to give you blowjobs. It's not funny. They don't think it's funny. Kara complained. But it is funny, Matt said. We have, uh, we have been pretty rough on our girls. We'd asked our Russian staff to flash their asses or breasts for us. We tell them that if they wanted to keep their jobs, they'd have to perform unprotected anal sex with us. Nearly every day, we asked our female staff if they approved of anal sex. This was a fixation of ours. Can I F you in the A, huh? I mean, without a rubber, is that okay? It was all part of the fun. Fun that Kara was no part of. Um... There's no truth to those stories we wrote about our experiences then published with a note explicitly stating they were nonfiction. It was a pleasure last night to sit and talk at Harvard Bookstore event with the uh, excellent Robin Young at NPR's Here and Now. The topic last night was my new book, I Can't Breathe, about the killing of Eric Garner. In particular, she asked about a passage from the Exile book in 1999, a chapter written by my former co-editor Mark Ames, in which she brags about harassing women in the newspaper office. The behavior he described is reprehensible. It is also, like a lot of other things in the Exile, fictional and not true. I've never made advances or sexually suggestive comments to any co-worker in any office here or in Russia. While the events described are not a biographical reality, this is not to say I don't have regrets about the exile, which was conceived as a giant satire whose purpose was to uh, be an ongoing embarrassment to the expatriates who came to Russia to spread the American way. In my younger mind, this sounded like a good idea, a cross of Andrew Dice Clay, the ugly American, and Charles Hebdo, Charlie Hebdo, but in practice, it was often stupid, cruel, or gratuitous, and mean-spirited. I regret many editorial decisions that I made back then, and putting my name as co-author on a book that used cruel and misogynistic language to describe many people and women in particular. I hope readers can forgive my poor judgment at the time. Um, let's see. This is also a time when women are reading these stories and saying me too, including every single member of the reader staff. Yes, every single one of us. Some of us woke up to the exile excerpts this morning. We still feel sick. To fail to acknowledge Taibbi's earlier work is to say that what he and Ames wrote about doesn't matter, uh, uh, about doing didn't matter. How those women felt didn't matter, and by extension, to say we don't matter, and you and our female readers don't matter, but we and but we do, and you do. Taibi is still speaking here tomorrow as part of the Ch Chicago Humanities Festival. Go ahead and ask if he agrees. So, uh, what Glenn Beck wants you to know is that um, in the world of trusted sources, Matt Taibi is his trusted source. I I mean. Does that make you a journalist? And now he's a, now, so even Rolling Stone is saying now he's a blogger. He's a blogger. <laughs> okay. He's a blogger. And I assume, he is now. And they'd say the same about Barry Weiss, who is, you know, one of the of big wigs over at the New York Times. He's a Substack blogger. Right. That is mm -hmm. what they're trying to do here, I guess, to push this yeah. off. Uh, Which, uh, to me, don't you think it's changed? I think journalist is actually less credible than blogger. <laughs> right. But you hang out with Stu, and he hangs out with you. So we're, and you think Matt Taibbi is a credible source on this. 
sus- <laughs> I mean, especially a Substack blogger. I, I mean, oh, that, you mean like Glenn Greenwald? And- yeah, I would include him in it. Fuck Glenn Greenwald. Glenn Greenwald, by the way, is one of the reasons why uh, Edward Snowden ended up trapped in Russia. Now, by the way, he's been granted citizenship, sworn oath to Russia, and he's going to stay there. Uh-huh. And Barry Weiss? If if he's alive, and that's not just a series of stories put out by a chatbot. And uh, Taibi? Yeah, I, I think I'm... I think I'm going to run in that pack, not... Uh, oh, all right. So Glenn Beck is in the uh, sexually harass your female staff pack, for the record. The others. Well, I mean, you know, you listen to Barry Weiss talk about her departure from the New York Times, and she, you know, talks about how there was all sorts of pressures within the organization to not say what people believed. And, right. you know, they went after people who questioned the, the narrative the wrong way over and over and over again. So you think when you're free to do whatever you want to do, you're at least going to be honest about it, right? No, you're not. As a matter of fact, there's more of a reason to go for clickbait bullshit. The, uh, the, only, the only thing that keeps most people on the, uh, you know, on the journalistic straight and narrow in terms of substack and shit is if they're trying to get another journalism job down the road. If they've given up on it entirely, I mean, they might as well be reading, you know, writing those like uh, firsthand account old Western novels about Doc Holliday. You're going to come out and, and say the things that you believe. And I think you. No, you're not. As a matter, there's, like I said, there's more of a reason to bullshit people. It's fiction is always more interesting. Got that a little bit from the initial Twitter files release, which kind of right. did a little bit of both sidesism. You know, it was kind of saying, well, there was some stuff on both sides and there were some good Democrats and, and all of this. But generally speaking, what it, what it pointed to. Okay. Also, where in this, if we've just been given a diatribe on how Matt Taibbi, because he's a blogger now and no longer works for the Rolling Stone, is more trustworthy and how... The great thing about Elon Musk is he's the richest guy in the world, so he's got no problems whatsoever. So he can just tell the truth without any worries whatsoever. Um, and so what does he do? Put out a lukewarm pile of bullshit. And the, and what's the reasoning? Oh, it's probably because they're not there yet. They're ready. They're going to, this is just the, this is, they're, they're going to pull the trap shut. This is just the, they're, they're putting the treat under the rock and then they're hiding behind a tree. That's this part. Two was a, a real effort by the Biden campaign, as we suspected, to... Campaign. Campaign. Not a government entity, not anybody working in government. Go after narratives they thought did not serve them. Uh, or were bullshit, or were just violations of Twitter's terms of service against showing cock on screen. But understood, I know. Glenn... Um, it, like they would rather run with the GOP pack, which is screaming to see Hunter Biden's cock. And part of that was the Hunter Biden laptop. But part of the reason why I'm not like all over this so far is because I don't think we have the real picture yet. I think. Also, why would you bury the lead in an expose? Taibbi and, and Musk aren't making money off this. This is straight up Twitter thread shit. I mean, you could think that they're going to try and draw attention to Twitter, but the minute they post it, it'll be everywhere else if it had any real shit there. Why bury the lead? Why not go, boom, here's the evidence. As a matter of fact, here's the site, collated. Do we not have to talk about it? It's all there. I'll tell you why. Because it has to be spoon-fed to you because it's bullshit. I think we have a, only a, a small slice. You know, right. I, 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 You assume... That there's a, a whole cake there, dumbass. I think that the these documents were turned over to a couple of journalists who have not had, had or bloggers who have not had the time <laughs> <laughs> to fully go through them and give us, uh, you know, a, a moment by moment look as to who did what and how. Well, then why do the expose before you've had a time to do the moment by moment look? Obviously, by the way. The, they were not, It was, there wasn't this period of like redaction and study. He accidentally put Jack Dorsey's fucking email out to the world. How they did it. They absolutely rushed it. And it's going to take time, I think, for that to sort of marinate and go so, through the system. Here from 40,000 feet, here's what we... 
this is, yeah, let's get the overarching view. Thank God Glenn Beck is here to help us tie all these things together. You know, Glenn is the magnet to these iron filings, and he is the one who can make it into a mustache or a beard or a unibrow. On, and by the way, I'm not just saying that because Stu, right in this very moment, looks like the guy in the iron filings magnet face toy thing. He discovered um, Elon Musk released some of the... Yeah, DB, we talked about this morning about the Russian air bases hit uh, with drones slash missiles. They're not quite sure what. Yeah. This inside information um, and some of the documents that showed that a couple of things. One, the FBI was meeting with them monthly. And then as it got close to the elect... Yeah, because of child porn and human trafficking and all the other reasons why large social media platforms have to meet with uh, law enforcement constantly or have a, a connection with them. Like, think about the number of, like, people live streaming crime on Facebook. And then, and then tell me you're shocked that law enforcement meets with them on a, on, a, on a regular schedule to give them a heads up or get a heads up on what they've seen. They were meeting with them weekly. That is troublesome. Uh, again, not something that we didn't know, but it is something that was called a conspiracy theory for a long time. No, it wasn't. None of this was called a conspiracy theory except the bullshit idea that the FBI threatened Twitter into doing it or anybody um, threatened Twitter. If you don't take this off, something will happen to you, which is the, the, the uh, would be an exact example of government overreach and violations of First Amendment protections. That's the only part. And the, only, and the reason, by the way, the only way it's not a conspiracy theory is if eventually these fuckers admit that the only one in power to actually do that would have been the Trump administration because the Biden campaign was just that, a fucking campaign. They had no power whatsoever. They asked that Hunter Biden dick pics were taken off the, the site. Dick pics aren't allowed anyways. Sorry, Anthony Weiner. Uh, Sorry, Glenn Beck. Sorry, Stu. Sorry, Kevin McCarthy. Sorry, Jim Jordan. Sorry. No, you're not going to be able to just gaze at knobs nonstop on Twitter. Um, that they were... They meet with them also over missing persons, data, harvesting location information. That's absolutely true, Elmac. There's, um, there's, there's a myriad of reasons. Taking the Hunter Biden story and they were getting advice from the FBI and the people inside of Twitter were the ones that were um, torpedoing it with the advice from the Biden campaign. Well, that... Advice? Dear God! It's a shocking... Not, not advice. Did they even listen to themselves? That's what we found. So it's not new to any conservative. However, it is new to the press. And No, it fucking well isn't. Ever, it, that's why it's not going anywhere in the greater press, because there's nothing shocking about it. The... The essence was is that the, the FBI was warning them about all kinds of stuff because there's terroristic threats, ISIS, fucking, you know, child traffickers, all kinds of shit try to post things and they have to have a regular review of these kind of things. Then up to an election, there's obviously going to be foreign influence. This is where we're hearing most of it's going to be coming from. Be on the lookout for this kind of stuff. And then the administration of the Trump campaign, or sorry, the administration and the Trump campaign, which were two entities working at the same time, one with power over the site and one without. But technically speaking, if one makes an ask, it's considered an ask from the, the White House, which would be the concerning part of this. And the party out of power's request from a campaign about removing sexually explicit material from the site. And it is new to the press. This is why this is a big deal. It's not a big deal. It is, it's so not a big deal. You're not going to feel, in my opinion, you're not going to feel like, whoa, wow, look at that smoking gun. You're right.
because we've been talking about it. Oh, I see. That's what it is. Yeah, like we assumed this. Well, here, here's the problem they're running into. This is what he's really getting at. We, they've been talking about this being a you know conspiracy for a long time that they were conspiring to get. I mean, Trump talks about it all the time. Conspiring to keep the story out of the headlines. Conspiring to keep the story. Big tech, big Democrats, big corporations, woke blah blah blah, all working in conjunction to keep the story off the headlines. They've been talking about this, but in a much more conspiratorial fashion, which this does not live up to. So, of course, they're let down by it. So, Glenn's trying to, you know, doing his best to keep this fucking deflated ball, volleyball in the air. We've known this was going on. The whole world has known this was going on. Yeah, we just didn't give a fuck. And what they found was the... Nothing! The, the right will get some things, you know, on their side as well. But the disturbing part to me was it comes through personal contacts. So it is truly, would you call it nepotism? You know, you got to know somebody. No, that's not nepotism. It's cronyism, fuckhead. If you're going to make an accusation about, no, no. Hunter Biden doesn't work at Twitter. Jesus Christ. And if you knew somebody in Twitter, you could get the world changed. And no, you could not. And so you had people m reaching out to their friends in Twitter, reaching out to their former co-workers, maybe at the White House and saying, oh, where? Hey, look, this is a problem. Can you take care of it? Yep, I got it. I'll take care of it for you. Yeah. And of course, it n no, that's not a, that's not ex at all what happened. In, in implicit in that is that 90% of the people who worked at Twitter were liberal. So all. Oh, fuck it. It's the tech kids. It's all that. It's, uh, it's all that coding and joke cola. Their friends yes. were liberal. So. All yeah, their friends were like gay and want to stay married or girls who want to have bodily autonomy. Creepy shit like that. All, right. Most of the stuff that got edited was uh, stuff that liberals wanted to be edited. And so it was not fair, as they pointed out. No, no, no. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, it was pretty fucking even in the volume of stuff. It's just you didn't give a shit about the stuff Trump tried to take down because that was just, you know, another bullet that wasn't in the quiver that didn't hit its target. Um, whereas the Hunter Biden thing was a removal of a target for from your side of the uh, the aisle by the way rock solid analogy it was not balanced it's not like both sides did the same thing by any yeah you're right you're right it was slightly imbalanced in that one side was a campaign a privately incorporated political entity trying to get someone elected and the other was the fucking president of the united states of america the head the chief executive officer of our government and the Chairman of like, oh, fucking hell. He means the only thing well, I both sides did the same things, but not anywhere. You know, when it's, you know, uh, one time for every nine times, right. that's, you know, yeah, it's not doing the same. And thing. I think like the only thing that we still need to see, by the way, it, name the nine times. Like uh, they're literally making up this imbalance in their fucking head. Be here. Is yes. this, this is bullet in the chamber? Did I say quiver? Beg your pardon. I don't know why I was picturing archery while doing a, while doing a a gun. But anyways, one of those things that's just confirmed what we yeah. believed was going on and what and what we've had evidence of already occurring. Right? We mm -hmm. we have a major. We already have evidence that goes down this road pretty significantly. No, you don't. You haven't had it. It's nonsense. You're making it up, Stu. Say one fucking thing. What? Miranda Devine's book? Get the fuck out of here. This backed it up. We just, it hasn't reached the level yet that it's to what I expected. I, I've just set this to the standards well, so high. Hey, look. Was I right or was I right? Was I right again? Right again. What'd I tell you? They set themselves up for this bullshit myth and it did not, it didn't stand up to scrutiny. It's not enough. They've, they've talked themselves into this fucking, like, 
this like mythological uh, like state where they're just fixated on it has to be this giant corruption thing and when it's not there they're just when they see what's really there it's a huge fucking letdown for this because i assume what they've done is so terrible and it isn't during these election periods uh that we haven't seen that evidence yet the Yes, uh, it has. My assumption has to be right. I couldn't possibly be a deluded moron. I think it'll come out. Of course you do, Stu. You're stupid. You know, I think that, that we're going to see it eventually, but so far we haven't seen it. We Well, you're not going to, Stu. I'm sorry. If you haven't seen it yet, you're not going to see it. All of it's out, stupid. Somebody put the catalog of the entire fucking hard drive out there on a database, a database, and nobody's found anything worth a fucking like, iota of evidence of the kind of stuff. They're still, they're still showing the fucking text messages about, um, let's see if you have to give half your money to your dad. You've only seen 80% of what I believe was going on, not a hundred. Oh, I see. I mean, okay, so reality is based on Stu's beliefs. 100%. So here's, here's why this is important. Oh, thank God. Finally, please tell us because so f we've been watching all this time and none of us can figure out why it's worth a fuck. If you are in with the it crowd. In with the it crowd. Is that... Is that like Kylie Jenner or it, it, you have to be like it, like that you have to hang around the it girl currently or uh, is it Taylor Swift? The it crowd, you mean the in crowd? Uh, the it crowd controls really the narrative still in America. Okay, good. So uh, in case you don't know who's controlling the narrative in America, it's the it crowd. Does he think IT is he mean? Is that what he means? I mean, definitely. The uh, thank you, IT engineers. You do uh, the Lord's work, and by Lord's work, I mean the overlords of the Illuminati's work. But um, the <laughs> shit, <laughs> IDN. Thank you. Thanks for the super chats. By the way, you can support the show with super chats if you feel like it. That'd be lovely. That would help the show. Also, Venmo. Boink 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 boink. Okay. Because. The New York Times and television and everything else still is caught in that. Now, I don't know if... By the way, who the fuck is the it crowd? What the... What? You can't just drop that and go, oh, oh yes, the it... He just made that shit up. He, I'm Literally, we're sitting here. He just... He's never, as far as I know, mentioned the it crowd before. Like, all of a sudden... I, am I supposed to keep up with all these fucking... The Illuminati and the Deep State and the fucking establishment... Fuck, now we got to follow the it crowd around? Jesus. Are these just people who um, refuse to have gendered pronouns entirely? It crowd. Get the fuck out of here. The American uh, people are still caught in that. But unless you get both sides talking about something, it's not going to filter down to the average American. Yeah, fucking, that's the thing. And luckily, you know, average, uh, you know, I'm talking to you, obviously, you average plebes who are incapable of any depth of thought. Um, we're, of course, talking about, uh, you know, somebody who will, who's not average, but well above average. Um, and uh, not, I mean, obviously, he's average when it comes to buttoning his sleeves. Um, because a lot of us miss that middle button. And I don't think he popped it just because his arms are bloating from too much Sonic. But... The important thing is that you and I, we're lucky. We're lucky people. We need to count our blessings, guys, because we we can't understand this. But luckily, we have Glenn here to help us walk through it. How the... Ah, oh, so good. Okay. Um, okay. And here's, here's the really interesting part. Okay, thank God, because uh, so far, whoo, nothing. First, they said uh -huh. that this was a conspiracy, that that... That wasn't happening. What? You got to be more specific, fucko. What? It's a conspiracy that wasn't happening. The laptop, the the 
the story, I guess, I guess primarily probably means that there, no one was asking them to censor the story. I don't think that was, first of all, they didn't. So never mind. Okay. Now that we have the evidence and the actual documents to show that it is that way. No, it isn't that way. And again, the Biden campaign asked Twitter to take down some dick pics of an addict during the time he was using. What did the, uh, the Trump White House ask to have taken down? You're not covering that at all. Now that was, that's an entity with government power. The, the highest government power in the fucking country. What did they ask to take down, Glenn? And why didn't they show that? And by the way, when Miranda Devine said they're probably holding some stuff back, you bet your ass Elon Musk is holding some shit back. You know what he's holding back? The requests from the Trump administration and the Trump campaign. Because they talked about them. They, mu- they exist. They must exist. They mu- you know, yeah, there were from there. But he doesn't show any of the emails from them. Why is that? Hmm? Anybody? Does Glenn know? Does Glenn give a fuck? Why didn't Elon Musk and Matt Taibbi show comparative emails from the Trump White House that asked? Because they admit they exist. They just didn't show any of them. What do they do? Now, I am somebody that doesn't understand how to tie their own fucking shoes. That just, I don't believe in coincidence. <laughs> Fuck off. This... It's all fate. It's fate. It's all been arranged. I can't believe it's coincidence. How do, How is it? I don't understand. The Matt Taibbi and Elon Musk, two douchebags who hang them out on boats with models and have a difficult time talking to women, would somehow meet accidentally. Why... Wouldn't he go to a real journalist? I don't know. I just don't. Sometimes, you know, wow, what a coincidence. Sometimes. So you do believe in it sometimes. But I always look first. Hmm. That's a weird coincidence. Are we? That's because you have hyper pattern recognition and instead of being intelligent. Glenn thinks that the connections he makes, no matter how wrong they are, point to an intelligence. I, I, I mean, I, I mean that. If you've ever seen his bullshit with his built his his blackboards where he's writing who's connected to who and all that kind of stuff. Okay, that is because Glenn Beck thinks that his connection, his ability to make these connections is a sign of intelligence even when the connections are wrong. I am not kidding at all. Glenn thinks he's smart even when he's dumb because the process of how he is dumb looks smart to him and that's how a dumb person thinks. Fucking hell. Jesus. Are you seeing this any place else? For instance, when they talked uh, right after COVID started, they were all saying the same thing. And then they all started to say the new normal. And then it went from the new normal to the Great Reset. And <laughs> Those aren't tied together, fuckhead. The Great Reset was something that came from Klaus Schwab and all those guys. And you guys decided... It was a great conspiracy theory and that that was totally going to happen. And that, 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 that you know, it, it funneled through right-wing media like crazy. So that's all they fucking heard. And so what this asshole thinks is that because he chose to turn into a cul-de-sac on the internet and drive around in a fucking circle that all the houses look alike. It's not because he's in a cul-de-sac doing fucking donuts. It's because that's what the, the world is now full of, you know, two-story... Victorians. That's the whole fucking world. Yeah, it's Jade Helm all over again. And everybody, all of a sudden, one day, everybody's talking about the Great Reset. No, they weren't. It trickled through. You just noticed when it became a story point for you. And the new normal is a phrase that comes up, came up after 9-11 too. When they talked about TSA and taking your shoes off. Remember that shit? I got news for you, fuckhead. The, God damn it. The, the new normal was going to include, post-COVID, no more shaking hands. You guys remember that? 
Are we ever going to hug again? Will we ever shake hands? No one's ever going to shake hands again. That's the end of it. Oh, dear God. We're never going to shake hands again. That was, it's a, is this the new normal? No one's shaking hands. The fuck out of here. <laughs> oh. oh, this is so annoying. <laughs> As a positive, and they're not explaining what the Great Reset is. They're just saying we need a Great Reset. Do you remember any of that? No, I, I don't really. I remember you trying to sell a book on it every fucking show and the book's not going anywhere. So you have to name drop it all the time, hoping that it bumps numbers every time you do it. And it doesn't. This is what happened over the weekend. Uh-oh. To take uh, Taibi and destroy him as a journalist. Destroy him as a, he's not a journalist anymore. He already lost his job. They accuse him of PR work. He's just being a public relations person. Yeah, because he's filtering the story the way he and Elon Musk want it. Again, they released emails about the, the Biden campaign asking for, and, and Bob Seska uh, looked at those and, you know, in, on the Internet Archive, and all of the ones that they're in the email he shows are all nude pictures. And, and some of them are, it's not even that Hunter Biden is the main person in it. There's a naked woman in it. And why the fuck should they just let, allow that picture to stay? It's basically revenge porn. But they don't show the ones from the Trump campaign, now, or the Trump administration. Now, why? If there's any selective editing in that thing, it is to favor Trump and the Trump White House. At me, anybody. Anybody, bring it. Seriously, it is PR. It is one-sided. It was obvious to anybody who read it. To whom? To, quote, the richest man in the world. And what does that make it? Sad, embarrassing, humiliating. No, no. The sad, embarrassing, and humiliating is for the people who like yourself and Miranda Devine and others who thought this, oh, fuck, here it comes. We've been shadow banned. We're going to find out that we were all kicked off. And... <clears throat> Turns out, nope. Now, let me go through some of these things. It was it was sad and embarrassing for everybody who was hoping it was going to be bigger. This is the uh, primetime editor for Mediaite. Uh, Mediaite. Uh, Matt Taibbi went from a fierce and intrepid journalist taking aims at the wealthy and powerful to do doing mundane PR for the world's richest huckster. Embarrassing. Yeah, uh, I would say there's another step. He went from being a uh, crass, misogynistic douchebag, uh, Andrew Dice Clay wannabe in Russia, where he got all of his initial financial backing. Then he went to somehow acceptability. Um, mainly by through cause marketing, you just you just write about the current thing from the most like outraged point of view, and and you'll automatically glom on to the you you must be speaking truth to power. Look how outraged you are, whether what you say ultimately turns out to be true or not, and then deteriorating back into your 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 essential larva state that you were in initially um, of being a douchebag. Ben Collins, senior reporter for NBC. Imagine throwing it all away to do PR work for the richest person in the world. Humiliating. Uh, Bloomberg. Yeah, by the way, the only reason this is embarrassing or humiliating why they're using these words is because they artificially have a high view of Matt Taibbi in the first place. If, you, if, you, if you've been around long enough, you skip that whole part and you were like, oh, I hope he's cleaning his act up, but I don't have any illusions that he's not a douchebag. Editors are uh, great, at, uh, not just because they make your work sharper, but because you can. they will ask things like, hey, should you be doing PR work for the richest man on the planet? Uh, MSNBC, imagine volunteering to do online PR work for the real world's richest man. By the way, there's a lot of overlap in what he's reading. Same people on different sites. Um, let's see. Media Matters. Uh, Matt Taibbi thread is a great example of overriding when you don't have the goods, but you want to admit you're just doing PR for the world's richest person. Right. They're, 
that's them posting from another one of the sources he's already cited. Um, Matt McDermott, doing PR for the richest person in the world, should come as no surprise. The correspondent for the uh, New York Times, CNN, Daily Beast, Huffington Post, and is a host on Al Jazeera, tweeted, Matt Taibbi, what sad, disgraceful downfall. I swear, he did good work in the in the old days. Should be a caution. No, in the mid days, it would be the proper. In the old days, he was a complete fuckhead. Ordinary tale for everyone. Selling your soul for the richest white nationalist on earth. Oh, my gosh. Um, the editor in chief. Well, I, I don't think that's fair anymore. He's from South Africa, but he doesn't live there anymore. Chief, something called popula.com wrote one minute. Not popula.com. Once you've lost popula.com. You're scouring Goldman Sachs. The next you're doing PR for the richest man in the world. Funny. If skewering. Hold on. Goes on, Hold on. and wait, 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 wait. PR for the rich dot com wrote one minute you're scouring Goldman Sachs the next you're doing PR for the richest man. He, uh, I'm gonna guess they meant skewering Goldman Sachs unless he was looking for a job. And in the world, funny, it goes on and on and on. Right, because it was a common opinion amongst a lot of people that this just looked like Matt Taibbi was helping him do cleanup, and that's exactly what he was doing. They all said the same thing. They're doing, he's doing PR work. All those, by the way, did Glenn read any sites that don't refer it to that way? Don't refer to him, you know, putting out that way. Is anybody, you know, referring to him instead of PR, just going, what a fall from grace, this is lame. If they didn't mention the phrase PR, they're not in his reading list. That is not a comprehensive reading list of everybody's opinion on any of those sites, much less each of every site. For the richest man in the world. So what they're doing is he sold out. But did Matt sell out? Um, no, I think he's doing it for free. That's why it's embarrassing, I think. They we're more upset the fact that he's not making any money off of it. Unless they let him sell it, you know, the, the documents were on his sub stack or some shit. I mean, Matt left the mainstream media for... He was in Rolling Stone, fucko. Stop acting like he worked for CNN. ...for a reason. What was that reason? Bear uh, because he was... Uh, I'm going to guess it's kind of like that nurse that got kicked to the curb uh, in that uh, Jessica Chastain movie. Everywhere kicks him out, but nobody wants to say why, because he's got a reputation... And they he do, they don't want to feel like they're attacking someone who apparently attacked the right people. Harry Weiss left the mainstream media for a reason. What was that reason? Um, let's let's see. What, um, let's see. Why did Barry Weiss leave? Um, let's see. Barry, uh, all I'm getting is uh, Barry Weiss from Storage Wars. Um, Uh, th are we talking about the same person? <laughs> uh, all right, there we go. Barry Weiss with an I, thank you. What was it? Well, let's see. Hold on one second. Back up. Okay, hold on one second. This is a Vogue article. Um, uh, <clears throat> New York Times... Oh, shit. It's going to be hidden behind it. says she was uh, resigned saying she was the subject of constant bullying by colleagues. It's the Observer. Hold on. I'm going to try and find one that will allow me to read it. 
Um, okay, hold on. The truth uh, behind Barry Weiss's resignation from the New York Times. Um, God damn, have some ads. Weiss's letter purports to be about free speech, but really it's about deference. Center-right opinion editor and columnist Barry Weiss has resigned from her lucrative and powerful perch at the New York Times, most likely to take up a lucrative and powerful perch elsewhere. Those familiar with her work will not be surprised to learn that her exit is accompanied by a public resignation letter which excoriates Twitter critics, other Times staffers, and what she describes as nefarious culture of intolerance and bullying on the left. That culture, she warns, bodes ill, especially for independent-minded young writers and editors paying close attention to what they'll have to do to advance their careers. She then mutters darkly about the new McCarthyism. She does not mention, though, presumably she knows that the old McC McCarthyism was uh, directed not against centrists, but against leftists such as those she herself is targeting. Uh, Weiss's letter purports to be about free speech, but really is about deference. Weiss thinks that chat the chattering classes to which she belongs are the most important speakers and that criticism of them threatens freedom. She cares about... Okay, so the letter... Hold on. Um, there you go. This is her resignation letter that she put it. It is... With sadness, did I write to tell you that I'm resigning from the New York Times? I joined the paper with gratitude and optimism three years ago. I was hired with the goal of bringing in voices that would not otherwise appear in your pages. First time writers, centrists, conservatives, and others who would not naturally think of the Times as their home. The reason for this effort was clear. The paper's failure to anticipate the outcome of the 2016 election meant that it didn't have a firm grasp of the country that it covers. Dean Beckett and others have admitted on such various occasions, of such un as much on various occasions. This pro priority and opinion was to help redress that critical shortcoming. I was honored to be part of that effort led by James Bennett. I am proud of my work as a writer. But the lessons, we ought to follow the election lessons about the importance of understanding other Americans and the necessity of resisting tribalism and the centrality of the free exchange of ideas to a democratic society have not been, have not been learned. Instead, a new consensus has emerged in the press but perhaps especially at this paper, that truth isn't a process of collective discovery, but an orthodoxy already known to an enlightened few whose job it is to inform everyone else. Twitter is not the masthead of the New York Times, but Twitter has become its ultimate editor as the ethics and mores, mores of the uh, platform have become, the, the, uh, become those of the paper. The paper itself has increasingly become a kind of performance space. Stories are chosen and told in a way to satisfy the narrowest of audiences. Rather than to allow a curious public to read about the world and then draw their own conclusions. Um, my own forays into what wrong think have made me the subject of constant bullying by colleagues who disagree with my views. They have called me a Nazi and a racist. I have learned to brush off such comments about how I'm writing about the Jews again. Several colleagues perceived to be friendly with me uh, were badgered by co-workers. My work and my character openly demeaned on company-wide Slack channels where masthead editors regularly weigh in there. Some co-workers insist I need to be rooted out of this company uh, if this company is to be truthfully a truly exclusive one, with, while others post axe emojis next to my name. Still, I mean, getting the axe because fired. Oh, dear. I'm doing my Freddy. No, no, no. I would never give her the benefit of my Freddy. Anyway, she worked there for three years. They, they brought her in to try and, like level out after 2016 and it didn't work and all she created was divisive gross bullshit to sell out or to be able to tell the truth that they saw without some editor going nah that hunter biden story is not really a story it isn't because it's a conspiracy um the story is a conspiracy or the actual laptop itself don't get me started no, no. It turns out that the FBI was lying to you. It, no, they weren't. It wasn't a conspiracy. It is a big deal. No, it is not a big deal. Now, Elon Musk. By the way, I also don't know. Uh, like, he, you lose kind of his idea. Of, maybe it's because we're chopping as we go. But his idea is like their interactions with social media aren't a big deal. Like, they're completely logical on every in every possible way as um put uh, the democrats on notice he said that oh uh so glenn's looking at the time right there if you're, if you're listening later he just looked at the clock and the reason he's looking at the clock is because this is yet another seg segment where glenn yammers until they're getting to the break point and he's just talking to get to the time at this point it's just about words to fill the space 
There's more smoking guns to come. There were none so far. He also said he's not going to sign autographs uh, anymore, and he doesn't. <laughs> Why? Because people are being a, rude to him because he's suddenly come out as a dick and he's losing his fan base because he talked them all into fucking crypto. Uh, he doesn't want to be in crowds anymore. Um, he's he's a little concerned for his. So, uh, he's concerned for he's just decaying into his Howard Hughes space like Trump's health. And I don't think it's because he's a smoker. Um, he what believes that he's living in a um, in some sort of a spy novel, and I which, which to sounds totally sane. I think he is. He might be. Oh fuck off! He's living in some kind of a spy novel. Yes, uh, that, you know that wonderful James Bond novel where where James. Uh, you know, scuba dives into a place with a duck on his head and snipes two guys and climbs up a wall using a grappling hook that comes out of his belt. And then he uh, puts a little mirror where this laser is and then has to walk very carefully as he shortens the laser to go back. And then he sets it on a little stand so that the laser bounces back to itself. And then he crawls through a tiny little window, lands on the ground, karate chops a guard, knocks him out, sneaks over. And uh, while no one's around except a beautiful woman looking on who we won't discover until later, but is very sexy and uh, a great lay and unfortunately has to die. Um, that he, he works his way through the case using a special device that Q got him. He sticks it in there and he clickety, 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 and he opens it up and insides of the plans for world domination. And it, he opens it up and it's this spelled out. That's, that's the spy novel <laughs> that Elon Musk lives in. By the way, according to the Daily Wire... What do you mean, by the fucking way? It looks like they may have um, interfered at Twitter, may have interfered in the Brazilian election as well. No. That's just my pillow bullshit. What do you mean, interfered? Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, totally. They're trying to get, you know, commies in charge of Brazil. It's like, those are the two big targets... For Twitter, huge, huge audience for Twitter is uh, their big market. They're going into is Brazil. <laughs> it's almost as if you are you've been uh, sent to your own little studio room and they've sealed the door and you've been huffing your own farts and you're starting to black out. These public private partnerships. Oh, my God. OK, so. This is a, a, a re-reference to the Great Reset and to the Chinese government. This public-private partnerships is what it, you know he's talking. And by the way, Republicans used to be for this. Republicans used to be for um, privatizing services. Taxpayers pay for it, and the and the companies provide the service. That's privatization, be it schools, healthcare, whatever. That was a big GOP talking point for fucking ever, and now. That's the that's got a bad name. That's public private partnerships. And it's evil because uh, specifically there's a Chinese phrase for it because they borrowed our term. Between those who want to control the world and those who are the mouthpiece for the world are seeing the opportunity. The opportunity for what? By coming together and working together to make sure that the little people know exactly who they should vote for and what they should think. Yeah, see that? He was walking right up to that break line. Just doing like, like okay, I got 45 seconds. I'm just gonna keep, what a douchebag. 